look, another hot chick from Shu Hung. Rules of Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at one of Tian Lu Trader's security personnel, the nine tailed guardian, Lu Wu. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We release a complete guide every weekend before a new character is released for the global server. So, if you would like to see more videos like this, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. We can all agree, Ethergazer is a fairly underrated game. Liking videos like this one will help creators reach more potential admins and grow our community. Thank you. Stop resisting now! You hear me? Lu Wu is a light DPS unit. She belongs to the Tian Yuan faction of characters and uses Rage as the resource to execute her skills. Lu's basic attacks are very unique amongst our current lineup of modifiers, as each sequence is capable of parrying incoming enemy attacks. On a successful parry, she will negate the incoming damage and generate 20 Rage, which is very important for her overall kit, because she can only activate her skill 3 while her Rage meter is full. Although being able to parry and the rage generation is nice, her parry is not as reliable as, say, Sekhmet's. The window for parries here are tight. The parrying attack must be launch, as the enemy launches their attack, or it will miss the parrying window. Her basic attack has five sequences, and generates a set amount of rage on hit. As stated before, each sequence of her basics are capable of parrying incoming attacks, generating 20 rage on successful parries. Her dodge skill has no intrinsic effects and simply trigger a time fracture for three seconds. Skill one counter spear allows her to advance forward with great speed, gathering nearby targets in her path before relocating behind them to deliver a devastating blow. Skill 2 Roaring Tiger brandishes her weapon with great mastery before delivering multiple blows to the surrounding foes, sending rank and file targets airborne. Skill 3 Spear Array is the bread and butter of her kit. It can only be cast when her rage meter is full and remains active for 27 seconds. Once activated, it grants a brief window of invincibility consumes all available rage dealing light damage to the surrounding targets. While in the domain, she has super armor, reducing incoming damage taken by 30%. In addition, she summons nine orbiting spears, and enemies within the domain are periodically pulled towards its center every three seconds, when skill one or skill two are cast within the domain. The target is bombarded by several spears, and three of the orbiting spears are recall back to Lu. The skill used to recall the spears has its cooldown reduced by 90%, and she gains one stack of spear soul, transforming skill three into one of its three variant forms. Which variant is currently available depends on how many spears have been recalled. Three array for the first, six array for the second, and nine array for the third, with each variant granting her a specific buff. Casting the three-cost variant assaults the targets in front of her with a barrage of attacks before piercing through them. In addition, it increases the instantaneous attack of the next three-cost variant by 9%. This effect stacks up to two times and lasts for nine seconds. Casting the six-cost variant will grant her super armor, reducing incoming damage taken by 30% before delivering an explosive blow to the surrounding targets. In addition, the skill's damage is increased by 18% if she is attacked while casting it. Casting the cost 9 variant summons a light projection at the target's location before shattering it with great force, dealing massive light damage. The skill's instantaneous damage against enemies below 50% HP and targets in time fractures or modifier mode is increased by 18%. Once all nine spears have been recalled, an enhanced basic attack will become available. This attack can be used at any point after the nine spears have been recalled. Lastly, if the domain expires before you can recall all nine spears, she will recover a set amount of rage base on how many spears remain. All rage is refunded if no spears were recalled. Her ultimate supreme authority has no intrinsic effect and allows her to swiftly deliver multiple blows to the targets in front of her. 
While in a party with winged gardener Ying Zhao, their ultimate skill chain Kun Lun Ward will increase the team's skill and melee damage by 20% respectively. When self or teammates triggers a time fracture, she gains 15% of her ultimate charge. For the most part, Lu is a fairly simple modifier to play. At the start of your battles, Rage Acquisition is going to be your top priority. Once your Rage Meter is full, activate Skill 3 to summon her domain. From here, use Skill 1 and Skill 2 to attack your target and recall the orbiting spears back to Lu. With each set, recall changing Skill 3 into one of its variants. One thing you should definitely be mindful of if you plan on running a free-to-play setup is the radius of the domain. Make sure your skills are being cast within its area of effect or its cooldown reduction will not take effect. Skill 2 is pretty safe to use and doesn't travel much but every now and then it will fling you outside. Skill 1 is notorious at sending you to Mars when casting it since it can cleave into enemies that are beyond the domain. You can use basic attack once if you find yourself outside or just dodge towards it before burning a skill you can still attack an enemy standing outside of the domain. Just make sure the skill is cast while you are within it, and the cooldown reduction will take effect. Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, here are the combos I like to use. Begin your encounter by casting skill 1 to close the gap, followed by skill 2. Basic attack until your rage meter is full, you can use skill 1 again when it becomes available, but make sure you have at least one skill off cooldown by the time her rage meter is full. Once full, use skill 3 to activate her domain. Use skill 2 to get 3 stacks of spear soul, followed by skill 3, skill 2, skill 3, skill 2, then 3 once more. Finish things off with your enhanced basic attack. For our second combo, we begin with skill 1, followed by skill 2. Basic attack until our rage meter is full. Once full, activate the domain, followed by skill 2, skill 3, skill 2, skill 2, skill 3 and enhance basics to finish things off. For our third combo, we begin with skill 1, followed by skill 2. Basic attack until our rage meter is full. Once full, activate the domain followed by skill 2, skill 2, skill 2, then skill 3. Finish things off with your enhanced basics. You may have realized I am relying heavily on skill 2 for her combos. The reason for this is it has a higher damage multiplier than skill 1. And like we mentioned before, it's also much safer when trying to stay within the domain. I have one last combo for you guys. For our final combo, we begin with our Rage Meter at 90, thanks to our Anger Management Warps, but the rotation is about the same. We begin with Skill 1, followed by Skill 2. Block the incoming attack with our Basics, and activate the Domain. As soon as the Domain appears, we want to dodge to cancel the casting animation, into Skill 2. As soon as Skill 2 connects, dodge again to cancel the animation. Skill 3, Skill 2 plus Dodge Cancel, Skill 3, Skill 2 plus Dodge Cancel. Skill 3 into Enhance Basics. Burn any skills you have available to clear things up. Regardless of which ether code you go with, these combos should work well enough for you. Speaking of ether codes,
three red is recommended for the main DPS role. This will allow each hit of her basic attacks to reduce her skill's cooldown by 0.15 seconds. Successful parries will further decrease skill cooldown by 1 seconds. She'll obtain a stack of attack buff each time a skill is cast, and three stacks on every parry. For every stack in her possession, increase her attack by 3%, stacking up to 9 times and last for 6 seconds. The buff's duration is continuously refreshed while within an active domain. Lastly, while the domain is activated, each spear recalled increase her crit damage by 9% for 18 seconds, stacking up 9 times. After casting any version of Skill 3's variants, the next parry, Skill 1, Skill 2 or Skill 3 cast, will deal an additional instant of damage and generate up to 20 rage. 3 yellow is mainly used while in the support role, but from my testing while using a free-to-play setup, its damage is about on par with red code. It will allow Skill 3's 6 cost to gather enemies on cast. Using any variant of Skill 3 while the domain is active will reduce the enemy's light resistance by 18% for 12 seconds. Successful parries will also reduce the attacker's melee resistance by 9% for 12 seconds. Finally, when activating the domain, she pulls aggro from all enemies on the field for 6 seconds. During these 6 seconds, all of her basic attacks parry window will cover their entire casting animation, and rage generated from a parry is increased by 50%. In addition, when the domain is activated, the team's light damage is increased by 18% for 12 seconds, and spears recalled by your skills gather nearby targets. For free to play players, this line can definitely be valuable, especially if you're having issues with large crowds and characters like Gengchan are not available. It also makes parrying a lot easier, so if you want to play into that aspect of her kit, this is probably the best line for you. But if you plan on running, her signature functor red code is going to be the better DPS option. Otherworlder Zheng is always a solid choice for free to play, providing up to 12% basic attack damage, skill damage and ultimate skill damage, simply by keeping your modifying level at S rank or above. Otherworlder Shuhu is a solid choice for the support role and will provide up to 16% armor break for 7 seconds every 12 seconds. Her signature functor Otherworlder Tulu provides the following benefits. When the domain is activated, independent damage is increased by 5% for 12 seconds. Change the crushing spears from recalling spear while the domain is active into crushing mountain. The first time the domain's duration ends, she obtains 24 Rage, while the domain is active and she is not within it. Casting skill 1 or skill 2 will relocate the domain to her location. Instantaneous crit damage of skill 3's third form is increased by 12% when hitting elites or boss enemies. Lastly, the base damage of skill 3 and its variants is increased by 18%. The functor will smooth out a lot of the issues those using the free-to-play setups have to deal with along with providing a nice boost to her overall damage. The new Nine Divisions of Heaven is essential for light units moving forward. It increases light damage by 10%, and after every light skill hits, skill damage is increased by 2.5%, stackable up to 9 times. Go ahead and slot it into 1, 3 and 5. For 2, 4 and 6 Caledonian Rage is highly recommended to meet her Rage requirements if you plan on using the free to play Functor. If you plan on getting her signature Functor, you can replace the Rage set with Ambush of the Owl for a 10% bonus melee damage, 5% skill damage and 15% basic attack damage. For enchantments, the standard attack, crit rate, crit damage are ideal with a couple waves of Rage mod in the second slots to help smooth out her Rage requirements. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want 2 power-up melee, 1 judge and 1 executioner. For 3 and 4, we want 2 telepathize force field ones and two EM Flux, while in a party with her skill chain partner. You can replace the telepathize force fields with two unfetters for short fights, 
When dealing with beefier enemies, revert back to the former. For 5 and 6, we want 2 Evolution Particle 3, and 2 Telekinesis Vector 3 for raw damage on your skill, 3 cast. There is a very good case to be made for running at least one Anger Management in place of the Telekinesis. Running 2 will allow you to cast your domain in seconds, but for longer fights the Telekinesis will be more beneficial. When it comes to team comps being paired with Ying Zhao, is her signature setup, with a support like Ling for the Triple Tianyuan bonus, or with Hera, Heimdall, or even Ukuni occupying the third slot. This setup will work fine for the current sandbox, but much like all other dual element teams, it will face some hardship in future versions. Our second and most common Lu team is with Ling and Gengchen. Since both Ling and Gengchen will play support, their element won't matter much. Lu will be the one dealing most of the team's damage. For a pure light team, you can run her alongside Tyr and Apollo for now, and with Hera and Verthandi in the future. If none of those are an option for you, Hel and Zenki, or Heimdall and Okuni are viable options for general play. Although she won't be able to make use of all of the skill chain's effect, Hodur and Okuni can help battery her rage. Now, I am sure everyone and their mum has been telling you not to go for Lu. If you're still undecided, I have a question for you. Are you here for business or pleasure? <laughs> Let's go. 